Hi, everybody. I'm Brittany Lewis with Forbes Breaking News. Joining me now is Forbes senior contributor, Adam Minsky. Adam, thank you so much for joining me. Thanks for having me, Brittany. We have had this conversation for n months now, but now we are at the final stretch, less than two weeks away from the student loan payment pause officially being lifted starting at the beginning of October. And right now, the Biden administration is trying to help borrowers through a few different programs. Can you run them down for us and explain what they are? So the biggest one that the Department of Education is focusing on right now is a new income driven repayment plan called the SAVE plan. Uh, the administration is billing this as the most affordable student loan repayment plan in history. Uh, and it is designed to lower borrowers payments based on their income as compared to uh, the uh, the other income driven plans that have been around for uh, some time. Um, already around 4 million borrowers have either been automatically enrolled or have signed up and the administration is encouraging other borrowers to enroll as well. Uh, the Biden administration is also still working on implementing the IDR account adjustment, which is designed to provide retroactive credit towards eventual loan forgiveness under income driven repayment and the public service loan forgiveness program. I do want to talk a little bit more about the SAVE plan. When you hear the most affordable plan ever as a borrower, your ears are perked. So can people still enroll and how do they do so? They absolutely can. Um, the benefits of the plan um, is that it has a larger poverty exclusion limit, which means borrowers can earn more income and actually still pay zero dollars. A single borrower uh, could pay uh, could earn um, a little over thirty thousand dollars and still have a zero dollar payment under save. Um, and for borrowers who make more than that, uh, their payment may be less than the way it would be under other plans. With some borrowers potentially seeing up to a fifty percent reduction in their uh, in, in their total student loan payments as compared to other income driven plans. There's also an interest subsidy that will permanently eliminate any excess interest that accrues above and beyond a borrower's payment, which will prevent their balances from growing over time, which unfortunately has been a feature historically under other income driven plans. So lots of major benefits. Borrowers that have been enrolled in the revised page you earn plan, which is being replaced by save don't need to do anything. Most borrowers should be automatically transitioned over to save. Borrowers who are either not in an income driven plan already or were in a different income driven plan like income based repayment or pay as you earn uh, can look into possibly switching over. Uh, the easiest way to do that would be online at studentaid.gov. The Biden administration is saying that these plans are targeted. So who's eligible? Is it every borrower or if you make a certain amount of money? So for the SAVE plan, um, only direct federal student loan borrowers are eligible. That means that borrowers with some older commercial FEL program loans aren't eligible unless they consolidate those loans into the direct loan program. Uh, generally speaking, Parent PLUS borrowers also are not eligible uh, for the SAVE plan. Um, but most other federal student loan borrowers who have direct loans will be eligible. There's no income caps. Of course, you know whether the plan will be beneficial to a borrower depends on their own unique income and circumstances, but many borrowers will benefit from the SAFE plan. As we know, because we had many conversations about it, the Supreme Court shot down President Biden's sweeping student debt plan back in June. So is there any indication that these plans are going to suffer a similar fate? It's a good question. Um, uh, so as of right now, I'm not aware of any lawsuits specifically targeting the SAVE plan. Uh, Republicans in Congress are trying to pass legislation that would repeal the SAVE plan. President Biden is almost certainly to veto that legislation if it's passed, and there uh, is unlikely to be veto-proof supermajorities in either the House or the Senate, so those efforts will probably fail. There was a pending lawsuit uh, uh, seeking to block the relief under the IDR account adjustment. That lawsuit was dismissed by a federal district court judge last month, although the challengers are currently appealing that to the Sixth Circuit Court of Appeals. Adam, you outlined all of the administration's current plans to help borrowers out, but you did note that the system currently is buckling. That is the word you used. So can you explain what you meant? 
Well, when 40 million borrowers all return to repayment all at the same time, um, and there's a bunch of new programs and benefits out there that borrowers are trying to access, understandably, I think a lot of borrowers are going to want uh, some questions answered and some assistance in getting them lined up with these initiatives. Uh, the issue is that the Department of Education was flat funded by Congress, and the result is that both the Department of Education and its contracted loan servicers have not been sufficiently able to staff up to be able to field uh, these massive uh, uh, inquiries from borrowers uh, trying to get some information and some answers to their questions. The result is, unfortunately, very long call hold times for loan servicers. Some borrowers are reporting being on hold for one, two, three, four hours or not being able to reach the loan servicers at all. Uh, some servicers actually closed their call centers due to call volume. And it's a real problem because payments are going to be due starting in October. And if borrowers Borrowers don't get their questions answered, and they're not able to address problems or errors or mistakes made by servicers, which we're also hearing about. Um, it's really turning into a big mess, unfortunately. Adam, we've been talking for months, and you impart wisdom for all borrowers at the end of every video. And you've said time and time again, if you're a borrower, get your affairs in order, get your questions answered, so this holdup doesn't happen. But here we are, and we know that hindsight is 2020. But where does the blame lie for this bottleneck? Is it the Department of Justice or Department of Education? Could the Biden administration have done anything else? Where do you, who's to blame here? Do you think for this? I think there's plenty of blame to go around here. Uh, certainly, I think that uh, you know Congress is to blame in part for not adequately funding the Department of Education's Federal Student Aid Division. Uh, loan servicers share some of the blame for not adequately preparing for the return to repayment. Um, I certainly think that perhaps the return to repayment could have been handled uh, a little bit differently uh, to allow for a softer uh, uh, and uh, less abrupt transition to repayment. Um, so I do think that there's a lot of blame to go around. But, you know, advocates uh, have been warning about this for quite some time, that this type of unprecedented simultaneous return to repayment by 40 million borrowers, uh, which has never happened before, could really break the system. And unfortunately, uh, the system hasn't broken yet, but it's, it is buckling. And I think that is an adequate description of what's happening right now. It's really an unprecedented time when it comes to student loans. And in your writing for Forbes, you point out that student loan borrower advocacy groups are reportedly trying to shine a light on these issues. A, what are they doing? And B, is it working? Uh, well, so last week, a coalition of groups uh, basically encouraged uh, their members uh, and borrowers to call their servicers and basically report what's happening to the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, which is a federal watchdog agency that is monitoring the situation and oversees the, the federal financial system, including federal student loan servicers. Um, so a lot of borrowers then did report on what's going on to shine a light on things, to uh, get elected officials to chime in, um, and also hopefully to get the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau more involved um, uh, to maybe fix some of these problems. Adam, per tradition, I'm going to ask you again, as we're less than two weeks out from the start of October, what should borrowers be doing right now? Log into your account at studentaid.gov, see who your loan servicer is, make sure your loan contact information is up to date. Um, also create an online account with your loan servicer, make sure that all that information appears to be correct. Um, if it looks like you have a payment due in October that is not affordable, uh, start looking into your other options, including uh, this new save plan. For borrowers who are on track for public service loan forgiveness, make sure that you certify your employment. It's a good idea to do that before the end of the year as well. That can also also be done at studentaid.gov. And borrowers who have commercial FELP loans might want to consider consolidation. It's not right for everyone, but there are a number of benefits, including access to the IDR account adjustment and the new save plan. So that's something that borrowers might want to look into before the end of the year as well. Adam Minsky, as always, thank you for your insights. I appreciate you coming on. Thanks for having me. Always good to be here.